What's up? Ranger in 5678 here, and welcome back to Total Warhammer 3. Alright, so last episode, uh, we went through the realm of the chaos. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not that. The Lost God. Went through the Lost God, and basically we got to the end, and now we are finally dipping our heads into Immortal Empires. Hell yes, baby. So I figured out how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna actually spin a wheel, right? And we are gonna actually just, well, we're gonna spin the wheel and whatever it lands on, we are gonna go ahead and play them. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. Once we land on uh, whoever we get, so stay, we get the Dark Elves, right? I'm gonna go ahead and so we're gonna go ahead and play every faction there is and then once we finish that we'll knock the dark elves off the wheel and we'll play another uh we'll play another race but until then I am gonna choose who we are gonna play as because I gotta be honest with you I don't know how to play all of every single you know hero and all that stuff I mean dude look at the warriors of chaos there's freaking almost n uh, nine dudes to learn here and stuff like that. So, but what I will do though is that if we get a faction that I don't know how to play, um, well, then, you know, I will learn them on my off time and then we'll, you know, I can explain how and stuff from what I got. But for the most part though, we'll be learning from the list and then basically learning uh, what they got. Plus, we'll go ahead and dive into the lore as well. Um, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and spend our wheel of uh, fun. Um, hold up. Here we go. Alrighty. Oh, God. For the love of God, please do not get Tomb King or Lizard Man. I, uh, okay, let's do this. Alright, here we go. Alright, and we get... Slanesh? Really? Wow, that's easy. Okay, screw it. We're getting this little nest. All right. That, I will take it. Now, if I hide it, do I... Do we take the slanesh off? The slanesh actually go away? It does. Okay, so now we don't have slanesh. I'm going to go ahead and re-bookmark that just so we don't have to go through that again. So, hang on. There we go. All right, cool. All right, so let's play the nest. And I do kind of know how to play some slanesh, so... Who's ready for some sex? <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no sex in this game. But, so, from what I know from Slaness, so Slaness is one of the four chaos gods. Uh, god of temptation. Lust. Boobies. Alright. So, anyways, uh, we're not actually playing as the god, but we're playing as one of his greater demons and stuff like that. So, let's go ahead and look into the lore of Slaness. <clears throat> Flaness is, is dedicated to the pursuit of excess, gratification, hedonism, pain, and immoral pleasure or amoral pleasure at the expense of any other soul. He is the youngest of the chaos god, uh, gods for the complex emotion of erotic desire and decadence only exists within the minds of intelligent races. From within the realm of chaos, the dark prince revels in each new sensation discovers. He guides the mortal inhabitant, laden with desire to go even further their pursuit and stimu of stimulation. Those who serve Slaness are consumed by their own dark passion, driven by the need for their mistress master approved to commit more sordid atrocity. And so Slaness's followers practice war upon nation of the south. Of the South, of this Alabama, so I'm just kidding. seducing their foes into the service of the Dark God, inflicting symphonies of miseries upon those who resist his call. So basically, he is basically like the God of Temptation. You know, are you tempted? Are you tempted to like, I don't know, watch, you know, some anime and stuff like that when you should be, you know, studying for your college graduation test or whatever they call it. Well, you know, maybe, maybe do that later, you know, you, you'll have until tomorrow to, you know, do it. Just watch, a, just watch a little bit of anime, all right? Dragon Ball Z is coming out, new TV series, stuff like that. Let's watch that. No, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, basically that's what it is, stuff like that. Um, and then also the god of, like, you know, pleasure and pain. So, now, this is going to be our character, Nakari. Let's go ahead and read up on his lore. So Nakari is a ruiner of purity, a despoiler of the faithful and harbinger of damnation. To him, 
fear and lust are the most succulent of dishes but any mortal rapture provides sustenance particularly if the victim can be propelled from the heights of one to the depths of another nothing is more delectable to nakari than the act of snatching a prideful poppin jay from the adulation of his followers drowning him in stark terror then returning him broken minded and wallowing in his own involuntary filth to the mockery of comrades who once wore his praises and there he is the big sexy beast himself so we're going to be starting uh in the ring of whatever the fuck it's called um but basically in high elf land which is going to be very tough because you know high elves have really good starting armies um but we'll go ahead and just deal with that as we go so starting armies we're gonna get some hot ass demonesses of slanesh we got some devoted marauders of slanesh we got devoted marauders of slanesh but without the uh hell scourges we got some chariots and we got some cavalry units um so basically slanesh is a very micro uh a very micro i can't even think of the word right now but basically you got to focus your mind a lot on his chariot and stuff like that. He's all about flanking from behind. Yes, it's kind of funny that the best way to play, you know, you know, set gods is uh set gods demon army is to hit the enemy from the ass. So, anyways, faction effect. Allegiance points gained by 25%. Diplomatic relations with all factions is plus 20s. Tribute from vassals, 100%. Now, you might be asking, diplomatic relationships with plus 20 with all faction, and he's a demon, he's an evil demon guy? Yes, that is the point of Slaness. He is a, he, Slaness fight wars through diplomacy, not I mean, obviously you can do it with violence, which you'll need to eventually, but for the most part, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about Slaness's corruption when we get into it. Uh, Lord effects, so this is the Lord himself. Um, experience gained 50% each time a new faction is fought in battle. Seduce units cost 25% and enemy leadership is negative four in local regions. So you might be white. Seduce units, yes. I will go ahead and explain it as we go into the game but look at the artwork man this is pretty cool so man this is kind of cool like out of the four chaos gods i think slanesh is the least i play the most but i do kind of know like i just played him uh recently so i do kind of know uh how he works and all that stuff and that's basically what it is this series is not about you know the best starts or you know a guide or an a guide or anything this is kind of like a you know just uh looking into um you know each faction stuff like that so this is going to be a big series man because what we got like over like 40 something people to go through or something i don't know man but it's it's gonna it's gonna take a bit um but yeah so plus i have a couple mods on to make the world map look better and just make the game look better overall so um so yeah so i think like once we get in later we're gonna be playing a couple modded maps for left for dead uh this is based off of horror stuff so i think that'll be pretty fun yo his voice is so cool man he has that whispered demon voice would you like to eat some girl scout cookies with me i'm like hell yeah you got thin mint Alright, <laughs> so how they play seduces Lenes. Gather devotee throughout your campaign to spend on pleasurable act that benefits your home regions or profilerate cult and debilitated foreign lands and earn more followers. Take your forces into areas uh, sufficient slowness corruption and raise uh, disci uh, disciple armies to support your invasions. Defeat enemies and perform successful hero action to give enemy characters gifts of Slaness that impose negative effects on them and can earn you more devotee. Seduce enemy units before battles to have them join your side for the battle duration. Interact with humans, elves, or beastmen faction in various ways to build up seductive influence over them which can eventually lead to vassalization. I'm going to explain all that as we go. So... Uh, before we go ahead and start, number one, 
I got uh, the mod Fog of War. I hope you like the HUD, by the way, too. This is also another mod that makes the HUD, you know, unique to each faction or each race. But here's the, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about Fog of War, which is gonna let you uh, see all the map. Usually, if you uh, normally, you, you know, obviously you will have the fog here and stuff like that. You can't see. But this is the entire map of Total War, or our Warhammer. Boom this big ass land so we're gonna be exploring a lot of it so oh yeah oh, i can't wait man i'm so happy to finally start the series the only thing that is kind of funny and i'm really hoping we get a dlc for it but you know how the shadow of change uh dlc went we we'll probably won't they'll probably just you know leave it but we have this entire land around here to still explore and stuff like that. And apparently there's supposed to be some cat men people or something at some point. I don't know, man. So, what is this? Is this a high elf army? Okay. I've always wondered what, what goes on here. Nothing ever seems to happen here. Alright. Anyways, let's go ahead and get back to where we're supposed to be. Alright. So. As always, when we start into Immortal Empires, we always have a hero. No, not always. But usually we'll have a hero. And we can go ahead and... Um, you know, put them here and then we'll go into a fight. But I'm um, gonna go ahead and explain some stuff. So, number one, so how does Celeste play? So, as I've said, Celeste plays wars through diplomacy. So, number one thing you want to go ahead and always do is diplomacy uh, elves, beastmen, and humans uh, in order to. Uh, go ahead and produce Selenus influence and once and basically how you build Selenus influence is to do deals with them and stuff like that send them gifts you know um, you know make a non-aggression packs with them you know get them pull them in so they will want more of you and once you finally fill this up man you will uh, be able to vassalize them to where they will become your part of your uh, army as you can see we already got a lot of influence on one of the high elves uh, which is awesome so let's go ahead and see if we can do anything let's go ahead and give him a little payment so we'll give him a little bit of something there we go and that should build up slowness influence a little bit which it did and yeah and once it builds up man they're gonna be our uh army stuff like that very unique to everything else um because again funness is that temptation you know you'd be like oh he gave me some money man maybe he's not so bad after all so we also uh can make some stuff with uh the cult of pleasure the dark elf faction now because we are the demon of Slaness doesn't mean that we're the only thing that worships Slaness. there are some factions out there that has influence for example there's a skaven faction that has a lot of nurgle uh influence and we'll get to that once we get there but we have the cult of pleasure which is my personal favorite um you know uh, army as the dark elves for you know various reasons <laughs> but uh we already started out with a non-aggression pact what do you bring before the hag sorceress and we'll go ahead do not presume my patience and give some presents to her too Such by the way i wouldn't normally do this i'm just i'm trying to kind of figure out as i go there are some factions and stuff that i do play a lot of and and i know the best ways to do stuff well not the best way but it's my personal way of doing stuff but really it just it just depends on you know who it is and stuff like that i don't know everything and stuff but what i always do on my settlements and stuff like that i always go for infrastructure and i always build growth um it's always important to get stuff that will generate income as well but uh growth is how you m level up your main building you level up your main building you'll be able to uh basically go up some tiers and it'll allow you to craft different stuff um and stuff like that so some very good units and stuff that i have never used but i really want to so we'll go ahead and there we go go ahead and put that out and then we might as well go ahead and uh build a 
infrastructure there. So we got one infrastructure that will increase our growth and our cash flow tax will see replenishment. And we also got another construction going on where we're going to be able to recruit better armies. So, um, all right. Okay. So naturally I would put, uh, our hero with our character, but I think they share the same movement range, so I'm actually going to go ahead and send out a cult of Slaness to the town. Now, this is very important to do so, because when you send your cultist out there, she's going to get, she should be getting another cultist. There we go, so she's successful. And now we can build a cult in there. And what we always want to normally do is normally from what i heard the best thing you want to do when you build a cult in there now the cult is like a secret building uh you always want to go ahead a disciple army will be summoned near the settlement oh well, that's pretty cool but you always want to get more cultists out there and so what we're gonna do is go ahead and build this so now we'll wait a turn and We'll go ahead and fight our first battle. And it's always kind of good to fight your first battle when you start a new campaign with a new faction. Just so you can get a feel of, you know, what you're playing and stuff like that. Plus, if you look over here, so something also very unique to Slanesh as well. Because we are the god of seduction, temptation, all that stuff. Uh, besides the legendary lord, or the, besides the lord and the heroes, we can uh, seduce uh, units. To fight for us so we can basically steal their units and have them fight for us so we're gonna go ahead and snatch uh some archers so we do have to pay gold but now they are part of our army and stuff like that now i'm pretty sure once we uh go into battle and finish it they're not part of our army anymore they're pretty much dead or they turn into demons or whatever blah 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 but um so really when you seduce uh a army or seduce units in an enemy's army don't worry about it just go ahead take that bitch and uh you know it's yours now so whoo all right so i remembered oh shit you know i i you know i just remembered i usually don't fight this first battle when i'm playing nikari because this one is a bit awkward uh it's awkward and this is really awkward that this is the very first episode and i'm already calling it out like this it's awkward because Usually the high elf will spawn over here in the fucking woods and I hate fighting in the woods because it just makes it more difficult to actually find shit. But because we have to, let's go ahead and, but you know what, before we start, let's go ahead and take a look at all our units and stuff like that. Um, just so we can kind of show off and stuff like that. So we first got the Hell Striders, the Slaness, our Spear Cavalry. Looking pretty awesome. So, demon dudes on um, demon lizard anteater dudes. Uh, then we got the demon Esselenes. Hello, you sexy ladies. So, how you doing? So, these are your flanker units and stuff like that. You always want to try to have them hit from behind because, you know, sex joke and stuff like that. Then you got our devoted marauders of Selenes. These are basically dudes who are like, hell yeah, sex forever. And uh, pretty much are working for us and stuff like that. So, yep. Uh, they are basically, you know, let's just say they're demon worshippers. Then we got our Fiends of Selenes, a monstrous infantry. Um, which, again, is very nice to hit them in the back. But they have really some of the coolest, like, movements I've ever seen in the game. Like, their animations are so smooth. And then we got the chariots and stuff like that. And these are some very good chariots. Some hot demon babes up here, too. Look at that. God damn. Alright, anyways. So, yeah. So, we got our chariots and stuff like that. And then we go back here. <laughs> and look at that. Look at that. We got the high elf armies right here. Uh, so, yeah. We got their archers. And the cool thing, when you seduce a unit, their colors change. So, instead of, like, the colors of the faction that we're fighting, they're going to be our colors. And then, of course, you got the man himself, Nakari. Hell, yeah. So. Alright. Let's go ahead and... Go ahead. So, one thing about uh, Slaness is that they don't have armor because, you know, well, you know, sex. But, anyways, <laughs> um, so you always want to, um, hold up, 24, 18. So, they have just about the same. So, we'll go ahead and put these guys. 
We'll actually do this. We'll go boom, 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 and then set them up here. Because again, I know we know that we're gonna be fighting them up there. So it's kind of no point. Uh, then we're gonna have our archers here. And the second thing is that we're not wood elves, so we're not gonna have a bonus shooting arrows through the trees and stuff, but you know, fight fire with fire, I guess. Alright. Then we we'll can go ahead and bring our flanker units over here. And we're actually going to bring our chariots up front. I'm actually going to try something I don't normally do. And that's uh, when we send our armies in, uh, start with the chariots first. Kind of soften up the line. So it's a very micro uh, heavy army that we got to be careful with. Alright. If we don't pay attention to a unit and they're getting flames or whatever, then it's gonna suck a lot. Alright. And not the kind of weight, not the kind of suck that Slanesh what would want to go through. Alright, so let's go ahead and move them up a bit so we can go into the forest. We're gonna go ahead and bring the demon babes up here. So Oh yeah, and watch watch these light monsters, guys. Where are they? Yeah. Look at these guys. Well, when I not getting blocked by their own dudes? That's so cool. Oh, they're actually where they're supposed to be. Oh, good job, guys. Alright. Again, very awkward, but... I mean, kind of have to... Do it with this one. And I missed click. Nice. There we go. Alright, what are these elf bitches, man? Pushes you to come out and fight. There they are. Okay, now we're already getting attacked. Jesus Christ. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and have these guys fight. We're gonna have them pull back. Demon babes are gonna go over here. Alright. Uh, where's this? Ooh, there's a spear infantry. Was it not good? Alright. So, boom. Boom. And then we're going to keep these guys back here. Firing on them. And we're just going to send a Kari in there. Fight that. Just planning up our uh, war, our movement. Alright. Let's go ahead and, and just have the chariots charge in there. See, we'll, see what we can make of it. Here they go. Yeah, I didn't think we were gonna be able to get a good charge in because I mean the freaking spear dudes, so Alright. Where are the chariots? And send our demon babes in there. And then have our lord. There we go. So yeah, so naturally I like to kind of like watch go in and watch the battles and stuff like happen. But, honest to God, it is not the best to do that when you're playing Sled Us. Because you gotta keep, you gotta keep finding shit to do. Alright. Where are my chariots? Okay, let's go ahead and bring them around. Oh, they're actually in combat with shit. You see what I mean? They're very, like, you very, have to pay attention to, like, where they are and stuff. chariots in. Alright, the demon babes are done fighting, so let's go ahead and send them back in there. Or actually, we'll send them right there. Who are these guys? Okay. Go ahead and send them back there. Have Nakari fight there. Where are my chariots? Okay. Gonna keep them running. Alright. Go. 
go. So now we get a faction ability. Where, uh, let's see, cause the damage combatant. So, eh, not the best thing, but better than nothing. There we go. So yeah, very awkward first battle that is. I mean, because the high elves are always like in the hills and stuff like that. And there's really not a lot of places to maneuver. It's where your like chariots and your cavalry to like flank and stuff like that. So very awkward battle. Um, but I mean, like I said, just get through it. And I always prefer <clears throat> to fight, especially the decisive battles. Um, because you lose less units that way anyways. Um, so like, I mean, we only lost 44 guys in there, but if we like auto resolved it, it may have been like more or something like that. So, all right, come on video game. Let's go chop chop. All right, finally, fuck it up. All right, so when we win and kick their asses, we get uh, usually a couple of ideas. So we can either replenish our army, make them devotees, or just offer them as tributes. Woohoo. Uh, now, how many devotees we have? We only have 29. Let's go ahead and enslave them. Make them one of ours. All right. Now, naturally, you want to go ahead and go in there and destroy the shit. But... Because, uh, okay, but because uh, we have a cult building in there and we get another devotee, devotee in there, I don't actually want to destroy them. Um, what I do want to try though, is I want to see if we can actually take this over. Ah, uh, fuck, no we can't. Alright, we'll go ahead and break it and move back. Alright, and we actually established a cult somewhere. Nice. All right. So we'll go ahead and research the technology. All right, six is the number of the Dark Prince. Six are the perfume houses. It's Lanest. Each captivating sense when to be discovered. All right. So normally, if there's anything like this that will help contribute to growth, I always go for growth first. So. Alright, then we got, uh, also got our skill tree and stuff like that for our legendary lord, Nakari. And we'll go ahead and route marcher. Okay, so naturally, uh, the first line, it really depends on who you're playing as, where it's important, stuff like that. So you get recruitment cost reduction, casualty captured after post-battle, the spoilers, or splendid corruption. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get casualties after uh battles and stuff like that or whatever the fuck it's called master. just so we can continue to um that's called 10 percent cost to perform just so we can continue to um i forgot what the fuck it was called <laughs> oh damn i never had to explain total war and at a all the factions, like out of all the chaos gods, we could have gotten. Like, I can explain corn easily, I can explain Nurgle easily, but Slanesh, like, like I said, they play so differently and so uniquely that you know it kind of takes a bit of a it kind of take a it, it takes a bit of brain power because again, you have to micro your armies to you know flank around and you know do shit, so it's weird. But it is what it is. So that's why we're here to learn. So, all right. So there you go. Because we established a new cult in there, we got uh, another chick and stuff like that. And we'll go ahead and once again do that. Name it and 
We're gonna establish another cult. There we go. Yes, they do. Alright. And, oh shit, we can't because we don't have enough to vote. Ah, okay. So the votes um, are, that's what it costs to do the cult and shit like that. That's, okay, so that's something I just learned right there. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and take out the settlement right now. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Uh, you know what, we don't actually need to fight this one. Let's go ahead and auto-resolve that. And we'll go ahead... Oh my god, 280... Okay, so this is how you you'd normally want to kind of farm a bit. So instead of just occupying straight up, we're going to go ahead and sack it because we're going to get 2,000... And also 51 devotees. Get out of there. And then... We'll go ahead and start recruiting. Because normally... Um, the AI is going to fix the buildings. The next time... We're, to the next thingy, we're going to go in there and take it again. And take that. So we're going to get 2,000 free gold. And some delicious devotees. So... Go ahead and rank them up again. Boom, boom, boom. I always go for the blue lines first uh, because it is always the best. All right. There we go. And then go ahead and start recruiting. So right now, uh, it's going to take us two turns to recruit. Eh, fuck it. Alright, let's go ahead and check our diplomacy and see what's going on. Alright, let's go ahead and check the high elves. Give them a big generous gift with a trade agreement. There we go. So like I said, you want to keep the uh, diplomacy going and stuff like that because... Again, the more influence you do, the better it is. And as soon as it gets full, these guys are automatically ours. And having a high elf army like that is ours first is awesome. So, go ahead and get that going and stuff like that. But yeah, man. So, and if you didn't notice too, because, uh, so when you're playing as one of the demons of chaos or, you know, or maybe like anything that causes corruption like Ratman, vampires, stuff like that. The cool thing I like about this game too, the de in terms of detail, is like looking at the map and seeing it slowly like change and stuff like that. Like as you can see, there's like you know arm tentacle crab arms coming up. The map is becoming like more purple, more ruinous, and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and take over the town. Boom, boom, boom. Occupy it. And there we go. And now that place is ours. And now we'll go ahead and look at that. We already got a Forsaken of Chaos, which is a very good front lines, uh, you know, damage dealer stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and get some of them. And then do we want another demon out? Do we want some more uh, thing? Hang on. How are we going to do on the flank is the question. That's a spear infantry, that's a sword, and that's a whip infantry. So, let's go ahead and get another front lines unit going. So, alright. And then we also have Unholy Manifestation. Um, with normally, if you want to use these, I believe you have to continue doing more Slaness Corruption. So, like that, again, East Demon has their own corruption. And there is a way to actually view what each uh, corruption stuff does uh, somewhere. The there we go. So yeah, so if you look over here and stuff like that, you have some information on like your town and stuff like that. For example, you see the growth. When this bar fills up, uh, we'll, it will finally go up a tier and that's when we can build a stronger building. We can also have income coming in and we'll collect the income every time. This is the control and stuff like that. And the less control you have, 
the worse shit gets to where uh, a rebellion army will start to pop up and you'll have to take them out or they're just going to come and ransack all your shits. Also, we got a couple pleasurable acts that we can do. We can have a pleasure party. Oh, I wonder what that does. And we can use that and it's going to cost 2,000 devotees. We're going to lose uh, 2,000 or 100 devotees. Good damn, that's a big ass party. And it's going to give us plus 50 growth, a boost in control. And that's it. And then we also have this, which is also going to give us a boost in control. Uh, recruitment cost is 25% and recruit range. That's obviously if you're about to recruit like a new army or something like that. That's very good. Or we got Pleasure Arena. That sounds pretty badass. Income of all building 20%. So not bad. But here we have our uh, all the corruptions that we can have. We got the Undivided Corruption, which is like for the Warriors of Chaos. And I believe the Norska unit. We have the Vampiric Corruption, which is obviously vampires the more corruptions you have there uh enables attrition which basically means that any armies that goes in your land will automatically start to lose health we have scaven corruption corn corruption nurgle corruption sinks corruption and of course you have slutness corruption which seduce units budget 50 percent control five and income from all building is plus five stuff like that so Corruption reflects the extent of which this province has been influenced by chaos, the undead, or skaven. It is affected by characters either through the presence of heroes, through skills, and item. It will also be affected by buildings, commandments, and events. So, so yeah, so a lot to explain, especially because this is our first, very first, you know, what is it, very first Immortal Empire to look into and all that stuff. But, um, I mean, the more we play it, you know, the more I'll re respond, and th the better you get at it. Or the bit more used to it you'll get. Um, seriously, 200 hours in and I still feel like I, there's a lot to learn and stuff like that. But that's why I love this game because, again, there's just a lot to learn. And you have a lot of options and stuff like that. So, uh, the only thing is, though, I don't have an option here. Um, I get to play whatever the wheel decides. And that is regardless if I actually know how to play the faction or not. is sustained by the adulation of his devotees. Its carnival of indulgence is self-perpetuating. Acts of debauchery attract a greater following, whose worship fuels further excess. Unwise. All right. Five votes each per turn. That's not too bad. All right. So I think we'll go ahead and. See if we can breach this place now. Alright, so it's a close defeat again. So I think we'll go ahead and seduce some of the units here. What do they got? So they got archers, light armor, and then they got regular archers. They also got a couple of dudes. Um what are we doing wait, how much what are we doing on money? Can you siege? Uh ah shit, we're only at a thousand. That's not good. Alright, so let's go ahead and get a battering ram. And uh, at the most, we could take we could take a spear unit. So. Which will still do close defeat, but, you know, we'll, we'll try. So. Uh, the only thing is, though, is the replenishment rate isn't that good. So. That's probably why we're going to be in close defeat. I actually have an idea. Break the siege. So I'm actually gonna do a very dirty trick that you can do. That is pretty much gonna break the game because I mean, because I mean, unless obviously you know real people aren't gonna fall for it. But as you know, as the AI and stuff like that, it is so funny and it's gonna work almost every time. So this is what we're gonna do. If we have the money for it, I hope to God we do. Alright, so if I need to beat an army and I need to pull them out of their hiding spots and stuff, then what I am going to do is recruit a lord. Doesn't matter who. Just recruit a lord. Here we go. Alright. So he needs time to, you know, fuck around and stuff like that, but whatever. Alright, 
Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our diplomacy stuff right now. What would you have of me? Welcome to the court of Althran. Alright, so we still gotta do some stuff to, uh, in order to suck up and, you know, have them like us and stuff like that. Um... I speak for the true king. Alright, we'll go ahead and start a thing with them. There we go. So now we started a little selection with them. Alright. And... Damn it. I'm misclicking my buttons now. Alright. Go ahead and do that. So, yeah, it, it is a lot of like waiting around. Um, stuff like that. Like, like I said, it's tabletop game plus there's over 280 different factions all doing their turns and stuff like that. So, um, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, we're going to almost break the AI and stuff like that if they decide to stay there. Um, and now, and then it will just be up to them to actually fall for it. So, what's the army looking like? Okay, 10. Alright. We might be able to do it. Okay, so now we're actually shit on income, so now we're going to have to do what we need to do now. Would you shut the fuck up, old man? Sh shut up! Alright, so anyways. So, we're going to go into ambush stance. There we go. And then, we're going to put our lord into raiding stance. Oh no, actually we're not. We're gonna put our lord here. Why are we putting our lord here? Because this army is gonna be like, huh, what a dumbass. He's just gonna send one of his lords out here by himself. He's gonna, they're gonna go up and try to attack the lord. While we are in an ambush stance where we're gonna come in and ambush them. So, if it works and we have a better army, then it's awesome. If it doesn't, then it's tough. We have a 70% 70, 70 chance that they actually won't spot the ambush, so... If we succeed, then that's awesome, and you know, and we can mostly take them by surprise, which will reduce their leadership, which should. Woo! Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! So even though they have definitely a stronger army than us, uh, because we managed, you know, we're gonna ambush them and all that stuff, they're not gonna see it's coming. So let's go ahead and fight this battle. So hey, if anything. I'm giving, you know, you guys like a little bit of tips and stuff like that. Uh, not, you know, with what to do with Slaness, because again, I don't touch Slaness that much. Um, but, you know, to do that little stance, stuff like that, like I say, you're going to abuse the shit out of it and just break the game almost every time. Alright. So, we're going to try to hit him from behind. We're going to have our flankers hit him from the ass while we have our frontline dudes uh, hit him from the front. So... Uh, Alright, so this is how an ambush usually works. So, oh my god, this awkward map again. I really do not like <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I really hate this land. It's just because, like I said, man, it's just all these trees and stuff. Alright, so, actually, it's gonna work to our advantage. So usually, holy shit, really? That close, huh? Um, an ambush, so you're gonna, like, see the army, their army marching and stuff like that. And now we get to set our ambush up. So let's go ahead and get our demonettes over here along with the chariotos and they're gonna be hitting from the front actually why well, send them all the way back there we're gonna send them right there uh, and then we'll send the monsters inventory there because they're gonna fight with our front lines unit and let's take a look at our new unit the, the forsaken of chaos yeah, they look pretty good. I love the co I do love the colors though of the uh, of the unit. So, all right. So we'll go ahead and send them here. All right, and they're gonna focus on the front lines while we have our marauder units focus back here on the horses or on the cavalry unit. We're going to go ahead and, of course, put these chicks here. Actually, 
and then having a car right here. All right, so that's the plan. So we're basically gonna try to hit him from all angles, or actually we're gonna hit him from two different angles. I want most of my forces, frontline forces here, taking care of these spearmen because high elves, they're gonna have good shield, they're gonna have good armor to fight that. But if these guys can come over here and try to take out these guys, um, you know, the fucking cavalry unit, and then we're gonna actually have our demoness and our chariot units come from behind here and try to go for the archers and stuff like that. So we're gonna hit all units at once, at least try. Uh, it's everyone, no, there's apparently one unit all the way over here. Oh, which is our health sliders, okay. So let's go ahead and have them also come back here. All right, so they should all be hidden, ready to go. So, all right. So, boom, 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 and then boom. They look like Chris, they have like Kristen Stewart haircut. Uh, and then go ahead and charge them up here. Pretty much along with everyone else. So, charge them up here. And the car is going to go straight for the Lord. And then we're going to give it a few seconds before we get our uh, flankers to come in. I love his voice lines though, it's pretty good. Here we go. And now you see how the archer units are by themselves. I'm gonna send them all to destroy them. And here they come. Yes! Yes, destroy them. Yeah. Oh my god, look at that. That is ooh, that is that's a lot of damage. Holy crap. That charge from the chariot was amazing. All right. Go ahead and send them all in. There we go. Alright, now we got Nakari in. Get our Forsaken to fight there. Good. Try to help this hero here. She's off fighting her own battle. Fighting these guys. Which has a pretty cool seed, actually. That is pretty damn cool looking. Try to get some support going. Oh, wow. So they actually blocked my charge uh, with their other cavalry unit. That's actually pretty smart. Alright, go ahead and send the, the demon babes over there. There they go. Yeah, a lot better action than, uh, than the last battle. A lot less weird. Alright, go ahead and send another. That's it. Boom. And that snapped them. So nice. So anytime you play a big legendary lord uh, like Nakari and stuff like that, you always want to try to get the uh, missile resistant stuff too. Uh, the reason why I never, you'll never ever see me or catch me like using giants in my armies is because they are basically a giant pincushion. And if you want to know the best way to get rid of big ass like entities 
is to focus all your range units onto uh, that single entity. <laughs> and that includes, uh, you know, lords as well. So, well, okay. So being able to take out uh, this army is going to give us a huge advantage and able to taking our first territory. So this is a long battle too, man. Like I'm pretty sure we would be able to have uh, taken over this territory faster, but you know, again, you know, explaining stuff and you know, I'm kind of just learning how to play Nakari as we go along here. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and devour the captive. And oh wow, he's got a trophy. Play as Lanes, spread gift to Lanes. Okay, I've already done that, but sure. Alright. Oh, we got 600. Holy shit. Alright. Let's go ahead. And. You should consider shutting the hell up. Shut up. Alright. So. We'll go ahead and put this guy there. Go ahead and rank up him too. So we can get some better uh, stuff going on. Uh, Tristan, Castles is suffering from all attention. That's actually pretty good, but we don't really need that right now. Uh, Casualty replenishment rate? Yes. Hell yes. And then... Slippery. Is that evasion? No, speed. Okay, fair enough. Alright. So, let's see, Summon Disciple Army. Oh, because we have 300, we can Summon Disciple Army. So, is that another thing that is unique uh, to Slaness? But, because we have 300 devotees, we got a now new army. 15 armies stacked up with some really good units and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and put them in. And there we go. And now it's going to be a close battle or a close victory. But all we need is to open that up. And continue the siege. And while that goes on. Uh, well, I'm pretty much going to end the episode after uh, we take this uh, this place too. So let's see what else do we have. So we got blood gods. Uh, fighting against coordinate factions. Eh, that might be good for the later game. Um, seduce units cost, that's probably pretty good. Especially since you're going up against the elves first and they're pretty tough. Um, let's see, from looting sediment, okay. Uh, what else do we got? Um, Slaness Corruption, that's good. Diplomatic with Slaness Faction, that can be good, but, I mean, you gotta find them first. Uh, Beastmen and Norska, again, you gotta find them. Okay, and then you have a couple other places that we can't get right now. So... Right now, I would say probably the best one to go for. Hmm. That's actually kind of tricky. Like I said, I don't play Slaness enough to actually know. Um, but. Disciple Army would be summoning near the settlement. Let's go ahead and do that. Fuck it. So now we'll actually have fucking... Uh, three armies attacking this one settlement. Might be a bit of an overkill, but I mean, like, screw it, man. So, um, so one thing that uh, is awesome with Disciple Armies is that they, obviously, you'll get a free army, no money needed or anything like that. But, as you can see here, they will take attrition unless an area with very high Slaness corruption. None of the units will replenish, so once you go into battle, what they have is what they have. And also, um, and also, they will also take the 20 devotees per turn, but we got 500, so that's not even a problem. Alright, so let's go in here, and so we should have our, uh, we should have our, uh, battering ram ready. So we're gonna have have these all controlled because this is a lot of units, especially with the Slanesh army, where you're already need to heavily focus on all your units and stuff like that. That's be way too much for my little baby brain. All right, 
Sorry if I found sounded far away. This mic is still weird. I'm still trying to get used to it. But um, yeah. Holy shit, yo. There's no way they're gonna survive that. <laughs> Look at that. We got twelve thousand five hundred sixty-one. We got one dude. Oh my god. Oh, they're gonna so screwed up the bum. But that's kind of the point of slow dash, isn't it? You know, screwing up the bum. Alright, let's see what we got here. So, very, very long walls. Not a lot to work with here, to be honest. Hmm. Hmm. I think what we got, because we don't, the only, our, our, the only siege equipment we have is the battering ram. Well, I definitely don't want to attack these two, because they got very good angles and stuff like that. See, so let's see what's reinforcement. So it's gonna take two minutes for them to come up. About two minutes for these guys as well. Okay. So let's actually move the reinforcement over there. Not five minutes. Actually, it doesn't matter because it's just one guy. Oh wait, no, that's not. That's him. It is so weird. This thing is kind of wacky. Fuck it. All right, we'll just go ahead and reset it. And put it back here. All right, two minutes, whatever. So we'll go ahead and move our units over here. We'll just attack from this side. Just again, I never really, I don't really do settlement battles, and even still, this is a Slanesh army, so it's gonna be weird. Alright, so up there, straight up. Um, I'm probably just gonna have to put the marauders on the uh, wall. Alright, put the demonettes in here so they don't get spotted and bumped. Actually, we'll put the. Yeah, I want the Forsaken on the machine. I don't want them. Well, I want them forsaken on the walls. I don't want them on that. We'll put the house scourgers on the machine. They'll take machine duty. Meaning that they should be taking the most casualty. Alright, so boom, boom. Alright. I'm actually gonna have one of my he heroes up there with them too. Actually, I might have two heroes up there. I'm gonna keep the heroes together. All right. So you guys go for the door automatically. Forsaken will be climbing the Walios along with the heroes. Oh, they can't. Oh, that's something you learn new. All right, let's go. Actually, I wonder if Nakari would do a better job at that. I bet he would actually do a better job at just knocking down the uh, thing. Well, if anything, though, we're keeping uh, the archers busy. Yes. Where are these guys going? I told them to put the ladder up here. Where? Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's definitely gonna break before, way before they get there. So let's just go ahead and send them all up here.
And now that I see it, there's really no point for the uh, Chaos of Forsaken to go up there. Because there's not, like, there's no archers. They all, they've all retreated, which is smart. So, the car is almost done with the gate, and the ram's not even up here, so. Gotta just drop that. Alright, it's almost there. And it's broken. Alright, let's send him in. Alright, and here comes the reinforcement. Just in time, too. Pretty cool. All right, let's get back to this. All right, so some of them's gonna make it. Some of them are gonna get stuck in that, but that's fine. So they get I said cool. So those guys broke them. We'll go ahead. Let's see. It's not a lot to go through. So that's where the thing is. They're actually left there. Holy shit, are they dumb? Okay, screw it. So point of the siege battle here is that you wanna capture the main point and then just hold it out. These dumbasses all left it undefended. Uh, at least that's what it seems like. So we're just gonna take it. Since we can. These archers are holding out a whole lot longer than anyone could imagine. There they go. Yeah, that's taking them out now. Uh, what about over here? The car is just taking out the trash. Oh, that's actually where it is, not this one. So go ahead and have that army there. Alright, and now these guys are starting to come in and take over. So get, they're trying to get the walls down and stuff. Cool. Alright. So yeah, we're attacking them from everywhere, so... Car just getting to the point. Get in there. Set these guys up and then charge them in. We got a chariot unit actually over here, so let's go ahead and put the chariot unit over there. Get them some support. 
while we try to make their army focus on all of these guys over here. That was actually a really nice charge. The center is yours. Defend it against the enemy that remain, my lord. The city will surely fall soon. Go. Gonna whip blast them. That did absolutely shit to them. Badasses. There we go. And as you can see, we're slowly building it up, but as long as we can get the spoiler green, we'll win. I don't know why I can't control these guys. What's going on here? Oh, that's weird. They're so spread out. That's pretty weird. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and get these guys in here as well. Oh shit, the chariot unit has to get stopped by spearmen. That's what I mean, man. Just Linus, like, you have to kind of, like, focus on them. Like, on every unit and see what they're doing. Very micro heavy. Alright, get the Forsaken back over here and see if they can help out. Good kills there. Alright, let's go ahead and move them up. Alright, how are we doing over here? Kind of close. Alright, the army spread into the city. Getting some shit done. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get our lord in there and start fighting. Shit. Oh, that's cool. He actually had uh, one of them stuck on his blade, so. But we're just about to win this. Yeah, yeah. That was not bad, actually. That was actually kind of fun. So, like a big giant seas. All of them were just, like, just so, so focused on, like, this army over here. And all we did was send a little small bass. Just three units. Uh, you know, uh, Nakari himself, the hero, and these marauders. And we managed to pull it through and stuff like that. But holy crap, look how many guys died here. That is insane. That is insane. But, nonetheless, we won. Holy shit. <laughs> man, Nakari's campaign, like, man, Slaness, they, they definitely are going to take some time to get used to. Um, and some time to get good. But, yeah, it is what it is, so. But, you know what? Now that I think about it. We are, this is, just because Slaness only had one uh, character, you know, Nakari, 
um, in there doesn't mean that's going to be the only character because we are also going to be doing Azazel next because he's still technically a Slaneshi, you know, unit. Uh, he's the champion of Slaneshi. So, we will be learning a little bit more about Slaneshi. And I know how to play Azazel a bit more than Akari. I have like a little thing that I do if, when I'm playing Azazel. And, um, yeah, and I prefer playing Azazel more than Nakari anyways, uh, just because of the units that he got. And plus, I, I, lo I like uh, Azazel's uh, lore more than Nakari. But nonetheless, we took it. And now we can subjugate. So, we can either occupy the settlement as our own. We can loot and occupy. Which basically will, uh, it will take down the, uh the whatever tier the settlement was already at but we will and we'll also knock some you know control off but we'll get devotees and a thousand gold we can sack it which is what we did over here and get only twenty four thousand and forty seven like that but we don't capture the settlement we can or we can raise it to the ground and burn it or we can subjugate it now this is something i never thought about uh before because this is brand new to uh you know the youtube series but when you subjugate it, you will become the master of this faction by subjugating them. They will obey your rule and supply you with additional income each turn. So basically, uh, they will become your army, which I think we'll go ahead and do. And look at that. We got our stuff back to... Yeah, we got our thing back. And now, instead of destroying this faction, they are us. Nish's influence that spreads most easily amongst the venal and weak mortal races. With a little intervention, you may ensure that the reach of Slanish eclipses that of his rivals. There you go. This faction has let the temptations of Slanes lure them to a very brink of damnation. You may send your disciples to attempt to dominate them and force them into vassalage. Uh, where are my heroes? Uh, so, actually, they are already, uh, part of us. So, if we go back into our, uh, diplomacy and stuff like that, you can see this faction that we started the war with has now has a full circle. Um, and now is a Slanesi faction. So, we basically vassalized them, meaning that they are basically now part of our army and stuff like that and that's essentially what happens if you keep influencing other uh you know factions stuff like that all you gotta do is get this bar full and you can control them without even fighting them so yeah man it, it, if you know how to play uh Selenas and nakari i'm sure you can be very strong but again it does take some time to get used to because they are very micro focused you know heavy whatever you know um but anyways that's gonna be that god damn <laughs> just for one province too that took an hour i mean again it was a lot, bunch of explaining and again i don't really play nakari all that much this is honestly my third time ever playing him so there you go but regardless though uh next we are going to be taking a look at azazel which if i remember he should be right over here right here so yeah so we're gonna be taking a look at azazel which is another he is the champion of slowness not the de a demon but his champion of slowness very well and uh yeah and i do actually know because one thing that i always usually do is i always if i have a chance to take down a legendary lord uh early in the game then i will do it and we will be doing that to mr what the fuck is he actually? There you go. Mr. Costalton or whatever the hell his name is. So, but anyways, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because I'm starving. So thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.